folks. Uh, I'm going to open up the Hadley Conservation Commission meeting for August 8th, 2020-23. First on the agenda is an enforcement order. 105 Stockbridge Street was continued. An enforcement order was issued in response to the EP comments. If you don't file number 170-294 concerning the bill of bordering vegetated wetlands at Fuller Grace Farm. The enforcement order requires a Western Avenue restoration plan. Site visit was conducted by Kayla and myself on 628. We want to try to do these two together, Kayla. Yeah. And then we also have the notice of intent 170-294 continued on behalf of Full of Grace Farm and UMass Stockford School of Agriculture. Learner Consulting seeks to perform grading and stormwater improvement for the horse farm and developing a wetlands restoration plan. Site visit conducted by Kayla and myself on 628. So I know we don't, we just recently got something today. Of the restoration plan. Yep. And I have the copies. I yeah. haven't really had a chance to look at it yet at all. Okay. So, and uh, we're talking to Kayla mm -hmm. and Mark Stinson. Hey, you want to what your comments are about peer review? Oh, yeah. Um, we're thinking that considering all that's going on mm -hmm. in the stormwater standards, um, the combined enforcement order and notice of intent of doing a peer review, mm -hmm. just so we can get a better idea of all the things that are happening and working together okay but yeah if you would want to like go over the changes that you've made i yep. know there have been some design changes yep um and maybe give a brief overview of the invasive plant management plan oh okay. that would be helpful for us okay so i guess starting with the plan um that erica put together basically um the plan is to target asiatic do you guys want you want this or do you want me to just say? I have one that maybe okay. we can share a few between them. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. So yeah, the plan is to target that Asiatic bittersweet. Um and in there to kind of put a schedule for that, an anticipated schedule, um, and like ongoing monitoring of that. And then um also cleaning out and mowing of that. What we're saying now is non-jurisdictional stormwater flow, which was one of the changes since last meeting, because Mark Stinson's opinion was that it was jurisdictional. Um, but you guys agreed it's not jurisdictional. So we that was one change we made in the drawings was to switch it back to how we had it. And we put the outfall back into the swale, um, like at lower elevation, which helps with the drainage too. Um, so I mean, that's the summary of the invasive species management plan. Um, did you want me to go over the drawing changes? Yeah, sure. Okay. Did you? Want I don't to? have the paper. Okay. Right. Sure. Do you guys have any copy? Anybody else? An old one. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, so yeah. this is the updated mm -hmm. one. So maybe This is what was sent today. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, that should oh, be the right one. Um, I saw it on my computer, so anyone else? Okay. Um, so basically the changes are that that swale is no longer considered jurisdictional. So we put the outfall of the pipe network that goes around the barn into the swale back further down into the swale where okay. it will discharge into the swale. Um, because it wasn't what you before going to keep it out of the swale. Yeah, and yeah. that was in response to DEP's comment that the swale was considered jurisdictional wetland. So we originally had it how we have it now. And then before the last meeting, we changed it, which was an ideal. Um, but we agree this is better the way it is now. Okay. Um, and we switched the silt fence to fiber roll. Um, just in response to a comment that was made during the last meeting, that uh, fiber roll would be easier um, like maintenance wise. Um, that was also put in all the way around in response to the Nihes comment on the turtles, because they didn't want the turtles to be able to get into the um, work area. Yeah. So those were the only design changes made since last time. Um, and ultimately, like the purpose of this whole project is to improve water quality. Um, this is a 
The project was funded through Mass EP 319 grant, which is a non point source uh, grant that improves water quality. So it's kind of benefiting the farmer in that she won't have to do as much maintenance, but it's also going to help the water quality in that the water isn't going to be directly draining through the barn and collecting horse manure, but we're diverting it around the barn. I know in the last meet there was some concern over the connection between that soil and the Mill River and how it was kind of clogged and backed mm -hmm. up. So yeah. I'm wondering how you're planning to approach So that. she added language in the plan there. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something that we also discussed with UMass um, and potentially trying to get additional money, like funding to do that work. Um, but yeah, that's definitely something we need to work out in terms of budget. But that was an original um, thing that we wanted to do, but we didn't think we could because of the question on whether that swale is juris like a wetland jurisdictional. Um, but we agree it makes sense in terms of getting more positive drainage going into the Mill River and because um, it just hasn't been retained in so long. So, so what's the next step, Kayla, that you recommend? Um, I personally am in favor of getting a peer review. There's a lot of the stormwater reports um, that I'm not sure I can fully interpret. I'm not sure how you all feel about that. Um, and just there's a lot going on at the site right now. And I think it couldn't hurt, but it's up to you. Um, and I, I, I can- I tend to agree with you. Okay. I think the board members in agreement. So who do we recommend for peer review that who they can who they can aid her? Um I think I'll have to reach out to a few reviewers, get quotes in yes, yes. draft contracts with them. Mm -hmm. And um, forward it to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to do it on a timely basis because what we'll do is I'll I'll look for a motion to continue both of these till September 12th in our next meeting. I guess is there any specific questions you have on the stormwater yeah, report? Um, okay. Okay, go ahead. Well, does anybody else have questions about the general plan? No, what size, what size uh, drainage are you putting in here? What size drainage? Yeah, what size pipes? I, um, yeah. So if you look on the details sheet, there's a table. So they're not all the same size. Uh, so if you go on the next sheet. And are this so, is all. Sorry, the feed afterwards, sorry. Um, So this pipe will be a French drain as well as this pipe. Mm -hmm. So this pipe is going to have a 10 inch diameter. This pipe will have a 12 inch diameter. Mm -hmm. um, this pipe up here is eight inch diameter. And then this pipe is 12 inch diameter. And then these are the associated elevations and slopes. Um, so this is a detail what the trench would look like for the piping. Right, these are all this is all you know stormwater compliant with with uh minimizing the uh sediment and all that business. Yeah, so we're not increasing any impervious area on the site. So technically, like we don't trigger that where we need to um, need the standard like this whole project is yeah. putting stormwater in, but it's not because of okay. increasing of impervious area. I mean, is all that is that area all paved now, or is all no? No, it's like hard pack gravel. There's no we, could, we there. could try to do is stop it from going through the barn and the manure. Right. Too. Yeah. This is going to be for cleaner storm water. Yeah. Going into okay. It. So the project so it's is a, it's an improvement. Yeah. <clears throat> over the current condition, but it will be 12 inches going into the swale. The final. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. That last one. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. That's crucial. Um, yeah. So it's not like we're doing this because we're adding impervious area. We're doing this to improve the water quality. Okay, yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah. Got it. Now, will this work be performed before or after the swale? Mm. Um. Well, I guess it most likely after or concurrent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? So I'll entertain a motion to continue to September 12th 
Okay. Six thirty, same time, same place. And in the meantime, Kayla will work with you and try to establish to get someone to do a peer review on this and get further comments from the BEP on the registration plan and the plan pieces. Okay. So we'll go forward. A motion? Yeah, I'll make it. Right. Board makes a motion. Second. Second. Great. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Brandon, you agree? Yeah, we're good. Sorry. Okay, so four ayes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming in. Next on the agenda is an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation for each morning in Russell Street. Glenn LaPlante has filed an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation for 328 Russell Street. The delineation was formed by that point in PA. And according to Kayla, we uh, haven't done one since 2005. Then, uh, and and uh, it's a discrepancy between the delineation of campus and red and delineation performed for the wood knife, wood knife widening project, which includes parts of this site. After speaking with Mark Stinson, it seems like it would be helpful to get a peer review of this application on this application. So I'm in the process of contacting a few consultants getting quote. The cost will be covered by the applicant. We can discuss it further to the meeting. You know, hopefully, you have a quote. No, I, I don't yet. Um... I also, we don't have a DEP number for this application yet. Um, so we'll have to wait for that. Um, but do we want to give just kind of an introduction, a big overview? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Meredith Bernstein, wetland scientist from SWCA. And I can just share my screen if that's okay. Okay. Uh, um, so yeah, the parcel is located at 328 Russell Street. It's across or it's east of Sta Stables Breakfast Joint okay. there. Um, across the street from Four Seasons. And yes, it is part of the current um, Route 9 improvement project with DOT. So I'll just explain the resource area. So I flagged the site, you know, it's a former typical Hadley, former farm field. Um, there are wetlands surrounding, oh, the mouse is going crazy, surrounding the whole parcel. This is like an alder swamp to the east here. Um, basically, they're all, all the wetlands are dominated by alder. This area we were calling, we are calling isolated because there's no inlet or outlet. There's no streams associated with that area, um, as opposed to this W2 has some drainage coming out of it and going off site. Um, w1 is associated with this river and there's um, a lot of drainage throughout the wetland there. You can walk around this entire area and not see any drainage. But um, I believe because, you know, when people are flagging um, linear projects, they're just looking at the edge of a resource area. So they're just like calling it BBW because they're not encompassing it's just relative to they're flagging relative to the road essentially so um i'm happy to go out and do a site walk and show you guys or meet with a peer reviewer whatever you want to do um this site's interesting because i believe this parcel was formerly associated with the home depot parcel and so back when they permitted that they there's some condition where they had to install permanent wetland boundary markers. So I found a bunch of them out there. And I flagged the wetland slightly higher because the veg has grown in, alder has really increased, but more or less it was, I was sort of flagging where I, saw, I found the boundaries, um, markers. I have a picture of one of them too. So um, I couldn't find the water quality cert or like in order of conditions that said they had to um, put those markers in, but let me just share the photos with you. You can see um, this site. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh, here we go. Just going up and down. Anyways, this is the field. The wetlands are basically the edge of the field. Here's one of the boundary markers. So they're pretty prominent. I believe they were like installed, they're a metal casing installed with concrete. And there I found um, a lot of those out there. So let me see. yeah, so this is 
what I was calling the isolated wetland. Um, it's like right adjacent to the Staples parking, Staples parking lot. You can see the active construction. I'm actually the wetland scientist involved with that project too, so I know that site well. Um, and they will be restoring behind that, behind that retaining wall, but that's a different project. So anyways, that's the isolated area. Let's see, this is right along Route 9, sort of like the access area um, and the alder swamp to the west. Is so, that wall gonna continue clean through? That retaining wall, um, what do you mean? Like through well, this area? No. On that prior picture, you, it looked like it ended right there. Is that yeah. gonna continue down to where, where it is on the next stretch over there by? Well, um, no, I don't think that, no. So okay. This area right. is open, yeah. And I think the retaining wall is because of the wetlands. Yeah, and because they're building that, it's like holding, it's the boundary for the new path. Um, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, but I think they had to probably put the retaining wall in because it's wet there and then is it's that, right along the road. So, yeah, Gary, it's probably, like, that's it, that's where the, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, yeah. Let's see so, um, so an ANRAD basically is, is asking the commission to approve the wetland boundaries, and that's it. No work is proposed right now. It's really for like project planning. So what people do when they want to develop a site is they lock in the wetland boundaries so they can have an engineer come in and do the plans. You think a request for determination basically. Yeah, but it's more formal. Yeah. yeah, you know, we paid two thousand dollars to um, file with the commission in the state and the difference is actually so eventually when we are in agreement that the wetland lines are correct we'll get you'll issue a order resource area determination and that can be um, recorded on the deed so that it can get continued like it's good for three years so then project planning happens within that time hopefully they come back with a project that's permittable um but the RDA will expire. So that determination, so it's really like an investment in because it can get continued, um, not continued, but renewed essentially, mm -hmm. or extended, sorry. Um, but the determinations those expire after three years and they're done. So I know it's a weird thing with the Wetlands Protection Act because you can file the RDA for wetland boundaries, but, um, but Mark Stinson always says he likes us to file and rad. So I guess it really you could file extensions for RDA? No, no, but for ORADs in order of conditions, yeah, you can file an extension. So that's what we recommended to do with this. It just helps with project planning. Um and so right now there's no project proposed. We're just trying to get the boundaries squared away so we can move forward with a potential project. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a file number. So yeah, we don't have a filing them. number. I yeah. guess what I would say is that. Since the delineations are valid for three years, the Route 9 widening delineation was 2019, was it, it was last, or no, 2021 was last extended maybe. So whatever delineation we accepted for that has to match up with whatever we accepted okay. in ANRAD. Yeah, that makes um, sense. So I can show you, I could screen share what we have. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Yeah, and I'm happy to change that. I understand. It's such a, it is an odd wetland in that, um, for an isolated wetland, it's rather yeah. large. So I'm happy to change that. We can just update our plans. It doesn't change the jurisdiction that much because you have a bylaw. Yeah. So either way, it's 35 foot. Yeah. 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 So the whole site is the whole site is going to be in your jurisdiction. So okay. Yeah. So just this area down here, this was delineated and marked as a bordering vegetated wetland. Okay. Um, rather than isolated. Okay. Yeah, and it looks like my flags and their flags. Um, are pretty similar. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy to update the sort of oh. designation of that. But is there, you think there's still a requirement for a period too? Um, what do you think? I'll leave it up to the commission if they feel like they have enough information. I think yeah. we'll, we'll see what the DEP says back, but I don't think that I don't think we need a period on this one. Okay. We'll still need to do a site visit. Mm -hmm. Um. So maybe one or two of us can walk the site and we can. Show us any how you delineated. Sure, yeah, definitely. Whenever you want, I have to go back and kind of refresh the flagging because um, some of it came down. So I'll just let me know like 
so I can get out there prior to our visit. And okay. Just, and yeah, and if you could send the updated map. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. Right. And right. yeah, I know if, we, if she's in agreement to update the map, I think we negate you know, here with you. It's going to match the DOT. Yeah. Yeah, it was previously marked. So I think it's pretty clear because they've been mowing it otherwise. The year is it's not wetlands since then. Okay. So I'll look for a motion to continue. Let's, any other board members have questions? No. no. For motion to continue this to September 12th. I make a motion to continue this to September. Continue this issue to September 12th. Do you have a second? Second. Two words and seconds. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? No. Aye. 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 Okay. You Thank you so much. Okay. See you on the 12th, or I'll reach out about Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Thank you. Next up is Hockenham Distribution Line Structures, RCOV. On behalf of Eversource Energy, BSC Consulting has submitted a request for certificate of compliance for the replacement of five distribution line structures off Hockenham Road, file number 170-286, adjacent to the cemetery. I went out there yesterday and the site has been stabilized and returned to pre-construction conditions. And the farmer who owns the property, the Ernst Road has a corn and crop growing. So this is pretty straightforward, I believe. Um, I think, Cable, you're in agreement that everything has been done to the land. Yeah, I have the copies of the request, which includes pictures, and I think someone from ESB here on the video. Let me hear. Yes. Hi, I'm Erasmus de Cruz with ESC. Nice to meet you all. Thanks. Hi. Yeah. So would you mind giving like, a brief background of the project and construction process? Oh, yes, absolutely. So the project was intended to replace five structures along that right over line, but on that line 19B15, 19B16. So construction lighting was installed along the entire wetland there and the bordering land subject to flooding and the farmer's land as well, where he usually planted crops. So after the mining was installed, the line crews came in and replaced all the structures. Then the area was restored. The old structures were removed, as well as the concrete foundations, and we just restored everything and which was in Yeah. 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 So we're going to be doing a certification, complete certification. It's hereby certified that the work regulated by the above reference order to give has been satisfactorily completed. Do I have a motion for that? I'll make it. Or I'll make a motion. Second. Second. By Rainer. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. So we're going to issue and we'll do some signatures. Thank you very much. Uh, any other business, Kayla? Um, yeah, so I'm hoping to register for four MACC courses um, at $65 each, but there would be a total of $260 coming out of our tuition budget. Mm -hmm. um, so we can go on that. And if anybody is interested in joining me for one of those courses, let me know so I could register you as well. Anybody interested? online yeah yeah I, I saw that email so i actually sent her an email back and i didn't realize that she sent one to me the 28th of last month so oh, okay. i'll figure out my whole setup thing or i'll get in touch with you this week yeah and i can yeah. email you the dates okay if that's helpful yeah absolutely i would just basically look for a basic motion to, to authorize kayla to attend these classes if anybody else here brandon you want to yeah as well no oh, absolutely we'll blanket <laughs> we'll, we'll cover the cost beautiful yeah, um, and, and everybody in the game with the motion? Yep. Exactly. And we want to make motion that. I will. Gordon says yes. Well, he says second, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, we'll make it simple. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Gabriel, for business? Uh, just yeah, the five minutes. Oh. Five minutes? Sorry. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. 
everyone fine with the July minutes? Yeah. Look for a motion to accept the July minutes. I'll make it record and make the motion. Second. Second. Great. No further discussion, I hear. Use it or isn't. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Updates? Um, no updates. We, I think we already talked about learning opportunities. We just went over that. Mm -hmm. We did the minutes and uh, I'll look for a motion for adjournment. Unless there's any further business anyone wants to talk about. Motion from the public. Make it. Motion to adjourn by Gordon. Second by. Oh, second. Brandon. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.